I agree. Good morning, everyone. So, beta, this is a session that I'm going to do every day with you, all of you. And we are going to meet every day at 10.30 a.m. And we are going to go ahead and prepare for three exams together, right? The first one is going to be DEPR. And the second one is going to be IAS Economics Optional. And the third one is going to be Indian Economic Service. And when we prepare for these three exams, automatically you will be prepared for the fourth exam, which is going to be UGC net exam. So we are going to focus every day on these four papers. And I'm going to meet you daily, right? From Monday to Friday, right? At 10.30 a.m. On Saturday, Sunday, also I am bringing something very important for all of you, right? But I will talk about that in some time. But for now, every day you should be tuning with me from Monday to Friday. And we will be going ahead and we will be solving some questions. We will be discussing some concepts uh, based on different topics that can be asked in these papers. Just remember one thing before I go ahead. Just try to understand better. All these three exams, RBI Depper exam, IAS Economics Optional exam, right, and Indian Economic Service exam, all these three exams have a lot of topics. And of course, UGC net exam, GRF, all these have a lot of common topics between them. So what we will be doing now, first of all, we will be focusing on these common topics. Jo in tino charo paper mein aate hai, we will be talking about those common topics. And after we have discussed those common topics, then I will be going ahead and I will be taking classes related to specific topics. What only comes in DEPR, what only comes in IAS, Economics Optional and only in IE. Okay. So that is what my aim is going to be. Okay, better. Now let's start with the first question of the day. So this preparation that I am going to do daily with you, this is going to be a combination of two things. We will be talking about MCQs and we will also be taking written questions. Right? So we will be talking about MCQs and written questions. Dono ko hi hum ek tackle karenge. So it is going to be a good preparation for you. We will be also discussing how to write solutions, kaise mock answer mein answer likhne hai, kaise final paper mein answer likhne hai. We will be also talking about all of this. I have two additional sessions that you want to go ahead and see. One is a session that we have conducted on answer writing skills. You can go ahead and look in our playlist. That session is available. And secondly, you can also go ahead and you can look into how to go ahead and sit for an interview. Again, something which is part as uh, which is available in our playlist. Uh, both the interviews are conducted with good IES officers. So you can go ahead and have a look at these two uh, videos also. Okay, better. Let's start with the first question. In the context of ordinal utility, how do we represent any preferences? The options are given by by using numbers with the help of indifference curve, with the help of utility function, and none of the above. So we are talking about ordinal utility and ordinality means what better ordinality actually goes ahead and it, it means ranking. Ordinality means ranking. So we are actually going ahead and talking about ranking. We are saying that we don't want to follow a cardinal approach. And whenever we talk about numbers, so in numbers, we actually go ahead and we represent things through uh, cardinal approach. Whenever we talk about numbers, it's a cardinal approach or cardinality approach. Right? Similarly, whenever we go ahead and we talk about utility functions, so if I go ahead and I tell you that, okay, u is equal to x into y and I hold utility at some number, so again, this holding it at some number makes it cardinal in nature. So if I have to choose the best option out of these, the best option would be with the help of indifference curve. Because when we go ahead and when we represent this using ICs, when we make indifference curves out of it, IC1, IC2, IC3, we know that we are actually going ahead and we are just doing it on the basis of ranking. We can just say that, you know, I preferred all points in indifference curve 3 over all points in indifference curve 2 
overall points in indifference curve one. So I can go ahead and I can talk about a concept like this in, in this year, isn't it? So ranking basically holds true whenever you go ahead and you talk about indifference curve. So out of this options, most of you would have confusion between option B and C because utility function can also mean that you, you know, you're talking about ranking, but a more better approach to it would be going ahead and talking about the indifference curves. So ordinal utility can be associated with answer number B. Take a beta. Let's go to the next question. This is assume that the government has two policies, a cash grant of 200 and a food stamp worth 200. Draw the budget constraint faced by the consumer in each of the two situations. Okay, bit of answer deco. So ye kya bol rahe na? it is going ahead and saying there are two situations. In first, you are getting a cash grant worth 200. So kya ho hai? That you have suppose there are two goods, X and Y. So abitak aapka budget line tha P1, X1 plus say X1 good one and good two. So P1 X1 plus P2 X2 is equal to income of the consumer. Abitak aapka budget line ye hai. You could have also taken some, you could have also taken some amount. Just say for example, you can take that, okay, let my P1 be 2, let my P2 be 4, let my income of the consumer be 100. Aisa kut karke bhi aap le sakte ho. If you find working with these parameters difficult, huh, then you could have written, okay, 2x1 plus 4x2 is equal to 100. Aise karke aap isko lik sakte. You can go ahead and write it like this also. Now, if I were to go ahead and plot this initial, agar mujhe iska actual budget line plot karna hai. So, all of us are very clear with it that if I take good x here and I take good y here, so on the x-axis, I will have m by px so, M by Px would mean 100 by 2, which means 50. And M by Py will mean 100 by 4, which means 25. So, I will have a budget line like, like this, which is 25 here and 50 here. Now, suppose I tell you that the government gives a cash grant. The government is giving a cash grant of 200. So, cash grant simply means I have got these 200 rupees with me. Right, let me make this bit a little inward so that I can draw it properly. Take this, this is 25, this is 50. So cash grant of 200 means that if initially my budget line is this, then my new budget line will go ahead and become 2x1 plus 4x2 is equal to, and here I have 100 with me. So it is going to go ahead and become 100 plus 200. I have got 200 from the government. So this is going to become 2x1 plus 4x2 is equal to 300. Right, this will be my new budget line. So if I just go ahead, if my x1 will be 0, then my x2 will be 300 by 4, 150 by 2, 75. And if my x2 will be 0, then my x1 will be 150. So what you will notice is that here my x1 becomes 150. So I will just write 150 here and the other becomes 75. So I will just have 75 here and I will just go ahead and try to join this. I will just go ahead and try to join this. Right. So when I will go ahead and I will join this, I will get my new budget line. Of course, remember that the slope has remained unchanged. Now also slope is Px by Py, which is 2 by 4, which is half. So slope up will be 0 0.5. And earlier also the slope is Px by Py, which is 2 by 4, which is half. So the slope is unchanged. Okay. Now let's talk about the second case. So budget line in case 1 is clear. Now it says draw the budget line in the other case where you are getting food stamp worth 200. So, ab kya wana? that you need to spend your 200 rupees on food. Aapko apne ye 200 rupees food par hi kharch karne hai. You cannot spend these 200 rupees on any other thing. Aap aur kisi jiz pe paisa nahi kharch kar sakte ho. So, if you just try to go ahead and you understand in this case, your budget line is 2x1 plus 4x2 is equal to 100. This is your initial budget line.
this is your initial budget line but now what has happened is that so so price of one unit of food is say two rupees this is food good one is food good one is food good two is other goods good one is food beta तो अब ध्यान से समझो मेरे को दो सौ रुपए मिले हैं आई हैव गॉट टू हंड्रेड रुपीज बट मुझे उसको फूड पे ही खर्च करना है सो सिंस आई हैव टू स्पेंड दिस टू हंड्रेड रुपीज ऑन फूड एंड ईच यूनिट ऑफ फूड कॉस्ट मी टू रुपीज इट मीन्स हाउ मेनी एडिशनल यूनिट ऑफ फूड आई विल बी एबल टू बाई सो आई विल बी एबल टू बाई आई हैव टू हंड्रेड गिवन बाई द गवर्नमेंट टू मी बट आई नीड टू स्पेंड इट ऑन फूड टू हंड्रेड बाई टू गिवस मी हंड्रेड सो आई कैन गो हेड एंड आई कैन बाय हंड्रेड यूनिट्स ऑफ फूड एक्स्ट्रा बट आई हैव टू स्पेंड दीज टू हंड्रेड ऑन फूड ओनली मैं इससे और कुछ नहीं खरीद सकती हूँ आई के नॉट गो एड इन बाई एनी थिंग एल्स आई नीड टू परचेज फूड ओनली फ्रॉम दैट राइट आई हैव गोन अड एंड डन नाउ आई हैव टेकन गुड वन हियर एंड आई हैव टेकन गुड टू हियर गुड वन रिप्रेजेंट्स फूड गुड टू रिप्रेजेंट्स ऑल अदर गुड्स इनिशियली दिस इज माई बजट लाइन वेर आई हैव ट्वेंटी फाइव हियर एंड फिफ्टी हियर and now i am saying that look i am able to go ahead and buy 100 units of food even when i have 0 rupees of my income or even when i go ahead and i spend my entire income on the other food to mera income kitna hai how much is my income my income is 100 rupees if i spend entire income on the other food to 100 divided by beta price of other good to 4 hai so it is going to be 25 so when you are purchasing 25 units of the other good in that phase also you can go ahead and you can consume up to 100 units of the food am i making sense so in this phase i am spending my entire income on good too and still i am going to go ahead and consume everything of food i am spending my entire income on good too and still i can purchase up to 100 units of food because i have been given 200 dollars but this needs to be spent only on food i cannot spend this on any other thing and then if i need to suppose consume one more unit of food ye to 100 unit ho gaye but beyond 100 if i need to consume food so i need to take out from my income then the trade off is the usual trade off the usual trade off of the budget line right so here suppose i tell you what happens bache just extend this this is good one so suppose i ask you what happens if you spend your entire income on good one if you spend your entire income on good one so you have your income as 100 rupees good one costs 2 rupees you will be able to purchase 50 units plus the government has given you 200 dollars and each unit costs you 2 dollars so from the government side you are able to purchase 100 units of the food so in total you are able to purchase 150 units of the food isn't it so here now i will be having this 150 here i will be having 150 am i clear try to understand that this trade budget line is the same as this the slope of this budget line and this budget line is the same right i need to spend those things from my income only just that every point will be plus every point that i consume of good of good one it will be plus 100 matlab kya matlab hai iska ki suppose sub, just imagine this thing suppose i was spending i was consuming 24 units of good two good two kya i was purchasing 24 units so each unit was priced at how much rupees each unit was priced at 4 rupee so i was spending 96 dollars on food and i had in total 100 dollars so i was left up with 4 dollars and good one ka price 2 rupees tha so out of these 4 dollars i could have purchased two units of good two to mane this 24 would have collaborated with two now on the new budget line if you just make a note of it this 24 would be corresponding to 100 plus 2 kyunki ye do unit to abhi bhi aapka income se aa raha hai but government has given you to purchase 100 units na so you will be purchasing 102 units 
so now your budget line is written in a way that you are able to go ahead and purchase 102 units from your income you are able to ultimately your consumption bundle here this bundle is 24, 102 now when earlier this consumption bundle was 2, 24 this also sorry 102, 24 Am I making sense here? Is this making clear clarity? This is mark the ICs and mark equilibrium. Draw ICs and mark equilibrium. So try to see this case. But this is the case with cash grant. In case of cash grant, let's say that my initial equilibrium is at point E. Right? My new equilibrium can be anywhere on the new budget line. Right? In specific cases, because it is at E, right, I would like to go ahead and I would, because, you know, as long as both of them are normal, good, right, I would like to increase the consumption of both the goods and go to a point like E dash. I would like to do that. Now, the issue with food stamp program is if I just try to kind of take this upward, that I have a limited budget set. So, if I just compare it, huh? Food stamp program has this line and this line. So in case of food stamp program, I just have this part as my budget set. And this part of the budget line is not accessible. So my new equilibrium can never be at this part because I have to make sure that I must spend all my money that I have got on food, I cannot use that money and increase my consumption of good wire. I cannot be in this zone. Yes, of course, I can go ahead and consume my entire income on good wire and be at this point where I'm spending all income on good wire and still consuming 100 units of the food. But I cannot go ahead and I cannot spend more than that on good wire, which is possible here. When I was getting $200 in form of cash grant, I can use this $200 to buy food or any other non-food item. So this part becomes non-accessible and only this part of the budget set is accessible. So my new equilibrium can only lie in this part of the budget line. So if initial equilibrium is here, maybe I will increase the consumption of both the goods and I can be here. Am I clear with it? So now what this says is, it says what would the consumer prefer? So this is clear that in case of cash grant, the consumer has an extra budget set. He has extra choices from which he can choose. He can be on this part of the budget set. Whereas this is not a possibility in case of food stamp program. Right. So food stamp program, whatever preferences he has in food stamp, he can definitely have those preferences in cash grant. But whatever preferences he has in cash grant, he does not have those preferences in food stamp. So his preferences in food stamp becomes a subset of his preferences in cash grant program. And therefore, he definitely prefers the cash grant program over the food stamp program. I hope this is clear. Okay, I would like to end the question today here itself and we will continue such sessions in the future. Thank you, Beta.